Well, when I was um, considering a new edition, writing a new edition of um, Reading with Meaning, I kind of wondered, of, you know, what might that be look, what might that look like? So I went back and um, reread it, and actually, I felt um, I was pretty, I was proud of it. You know, I think it, a lot of it um, stands on its own, and though it has been ten years, and I think all of us, you know, over ten years, you're thinking, um, your thinking changes a bit. So when I think about what's new in this um, second edition, I think of a couple of things. One. I think about um, the gradual lease of responsibility model because I used to think um, around gradual lease that it was that it was a linear process. Like first it would be teacher modeling, then we would move into guided practice and independent practice, and then finally application. But then after listening um, and reading some things by um, David Pearson, I began to understand that actually it wasn't as linear as. Um, as I had thought, you know, he talks about how we might even start with guided practice and then move into into more modeling because then, in fact, we'll know exactly what kids need rather than you know making some assumptions about what we might think they need. So instead of modeling and modeling and modeling on and on and on, now I'm thinking we want to model. Certainly, we want to model, but that we don't want to go overboard. So we might model a little bit send kids off to try it, and then through conferring um, and depending on what we ask them to make and do, we can have a really clear picture of exactly where they are. So again, instead of making assumptions about what they think, what we think they need, we can um, really focus on our teaching on what we really, what we know they need because we've released them, we found out, and then our lessons can be, I think, so much more intentional because they're based truly on um, truly on children's needs. So that, that's a, a switch for me, is to release kids a little bit earlier. Um, I also think um, when it comes to intentional teaching, a, a couple other things that I've been thinking about are when it comes to planning, to really think about the big picture, you know, first of all, what do I want, and I wrote about this, but I've even become a little bit more intentional there, is what do I want for them 10 years from now? You know, what do I want them to remember? So to think about that, and then to also think about what might be those guiding questions, you know, what are those big ideas really that go not only across the year, but throughout, um, throughout a, a unit of study? And so, for example, when I think about planning those um, those day-to-day -day lessons, um, you'll notice in the new edition of Reading with Meaning, there are um, planning documents that um, are in the book before each chapter. And that does give the guiding questions, the, you know, the big ideas. And then there's a section um, on that day-to-day -day planning. And you'll notice that there are some, um, lots of I can statements, you know. And at first, I kind of wondered about I can statements because for, um, for many years, I don't know if, mm, other teachers are like this, but we used to have to list the standards on the board, and you know we'd look at them and or not, and they kind of just stayed up there. And I, when I think back on that, that seemed kind of it didn't make a lot of sense. But now, when I think about um, being clear about what we're learning, I think for many years I was clear about where we were going, but I'm not sure that kids were as clear as I was, and so writing those I can statements or learning targets for kids in kid-friendly language um, just ensures that I know where we're going and they know and they know too. So that is that has been an addition um, and not only um, the the I can statements but also the matching assessments. So if we're really going to ensure a year's worth of growth for every child, you know, if we really want to ensure that children don't fall through the cracks, we want to build in some kind of short, quick assessment for them, um, maybe not every day, but maybe three or so times a week, just so that we're very clear um, about where kids are. And you know, the more I think about these I can statements and how that came about, you know, I think they're big in the world now, but I still wasn't um, sold until I started to think about what I've learned from Peter Johnston and his work um, around so many things, but particularly agency is what his work speaks to me most about, you know, that um, just giving children that sense that if they act and act strategically, um, they can accomplish their goals and to help them see that I'm the kind of kid that can figure things out. So how can we go about, I think, instilling that spark of agency? This is one way, because I can 
um, let's say, create mental images to help me retell stories. I mean, that's very clear. And so just having that statement right up there, whether it's on the board, whether it's on what we're going to ask children to do, I think just makes it so clear. And that then, depending on what we ask them to do or make, then at the end of the day, we can look at what we have. We have evidence beyond conferring. I mean, conferring is the number one way, but also to have something else that they make or do or say, um, I think really does help us see where children are as a whole. And then we can decide at the end of the day, who needs what? Who needs some more individual attention? What group, how might I group children together based on what I've learned they need?